uh, Dan Maxwell from Verb Mobile, and I'm going to talk a little bit um, about something a little bit different initially, and then sort of gradually bring us down to the level of talking about in-store and beacons and, and how we're doing some work with that. And so we are, as mentioned, a uh, mobile uh, advertising technology company, and we're 100% focused on location. And the interesting thing about location is that it's really enabling us to connect with and understand consumers in a way like we've never been able to before. Um, if you think about it, you know, everybody in this room has a mobile device, at least one in their pocket right now, and, and maybe, maybe more than one on their, on their person between tablets and um, phones and work phones and personal phones. And we take those devices everywhere we go. And, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're probably the only person who's actually interacting with your device. And really, that's the first time that, um, you know, that, that that's happened with digital technology, where it's really, truly a personal device and is, is a, it's essentially an extension of you. And so I want to talk a little bit about some of the tactics that, that we use and how location comes into play and what it enables us to do differently than the way that things have been done in the past. And so this slide has, you know, has a, several different things going on on it. Um, but the key thing to take away here is, is that there are a few key tactics that we're using based on location. And so we have a backbone of, um, a backbone of uh, publishing partners that we work with, a number of whom we've actually built apps and power their apps. And then another large number of those folks who we, um, who we work with uh, either on an SDK relationship or we've got our SDK embedded with them or we just have a direct publisher relationship with them. And you know, the overwhelming majority of those devices are passing GPS data up to us every time we receive an ad call. And we're able to take that data, store that data, build profile, profiles off that data, and target off that data either right now in real time or build profiles that will allow us to target against those devices in the future based on what we've gleaned. So the most common things that we're doing today are proximity targeting, which is something as simple as you are near um, a location, you're near a Target store, and Target wants to drive you into their store. If you're closer, you're more likely to act and to be, you know, to be driven to go there and take some sort of action that the advertiser wants than if you're 40 miles away in the middle of nowhere and, and it's not actionable for you. Um, the, other, the other popular tactic around proximity is conquesting, and that's you know, Target maybe saying, I want to advertise around Walmart, and I want to try and get people who are near a Walmart to come to Target instead because of an offer we're running or a special or... Uh, for, or, you know, for, for some specific product, uh, product that they have. Um, the other side of this, which is really interesting, is that you know, as you travel around with your device and you interact with the device and you receive ad calls or we receive ad calls from your device, we're able to record the information in a privacy-friendly way using device ID. Um, Apple has an IDFA. Google has a Google ID. Um, it's essentially a mobile cookie for in-app inventory, and it's the, you know, the, the best way of building profiles. When you, when you talk with a lot of mobile providers today or technology companies, they'll say, oh, yeah, we do mobile. And what they mean is mobile web. And mobile web is just a lot less interesting because there's no cookie in IO, iOS. Um, there is a cookie in Android, but you know, very difficult to, to have any scale there. In app, you've got these, pers they're not persistent any longer, but you've got these IDs. Um, that are much more persistent than, you know, obviously the, the lack of having any, any type of cookie. So we can start to, you know, to see where people travel, the types of places that they go, and to have a much better understanding of who a consumer is than we've ever been able to in digital before. And so just to sort of give you an example of that, when you think about, you know, display advertising, and you think about, about six or seven years ago, behavioral profiling and retargeting became really hot topics. And all of a sudden, everybody realized that, hey, if you understand who the consumer is, that can be even more valuable than just trying to make associations based on content, which is what we do in television, it's what we do you know, in print, and it's what we were doing in the internet until you know, seven or eight years ago. Um, but e even at that, again, you know, there, I don't know how your household is. You know, I'm married, I have two kids, all four of us are on the desktop computer, all four of us are on the tablet in the house, and we all have vastly different interests and in things that we're looking at. So, you know, here's an example of how a profile might have been built. It was a rules-based system where you would look and say, well, somebody visited sports, um, sports pages four times in the last 14 days. Therefore, they are a sports enthusiast. When, in fact, you know, it could be four different users looking at that, and it might be one page that they've looked at out of 1,000 pages that they've looked at, and collectively they're now grouped in as being a sports enthusiast and might start receiving ads, you know, to that end. And these people might not have a lot of interest in sports. 
And it's becoming more and more of an issue with the way that content is discovered on, online now. You've got companies like Outbrain and Taboola who are putting sponsored links up and trying to drive cross traffic between sites. And sometimes you don't even know where you're ending up or what the true nature is of the content that you're being driven to. So it's a really um, inefficient and ineffective way uh, relative to what we're able to do in mobile today. So when you think about mobile, and this may look similar to a journey that some people that are here have taken, either you know, just in the last couple of days or, or certainly recently, um, you know, when you have your mobile device and you're getting ready to travel to come to this conference, you're going to go to the airport and you're going to spend a lot of time waiting at the airport. Uh, you're going to be waiting in the security line. You're going to be probably waiting at the gate. You're going to be, if you're like me, you're having uh, you know, um, untold number of delays while you're sitting at the gate, sitting on the runway, on the plane, off the plane. Um, and you know, probably on your phone right up until the last second when the flight attendants are running up and down the aisle yelling at everybody to put their phones away or turn on airplane mode. So you know, we'll see signal there. And then as you progress and you get to the car rental agency and you get to the hotel, and then we see you in an office location, um, and then we see the device again um, you know, at a restaurant, we can start to build a profile. And the thing that's really interesting is we're talking about massive, massive data sets here in terms of you know, the, the number of different times we'll see a given device and the number of different places for the hundreds, you know, over 150 million devices that we see and have data, data on. So really, really big data. And what that's allowed us to do is to break free of the typical rules-based system. And we don't say, you were at an airport three times in the last month, therefore you're a travel enthusiast or you're a business traveler because, you know, that's a very, you know, very, very rough estimation. But we'll look at things like, you know, um, how, how likely are you to be seen in these types of locations versus the average person in, in, our, in our network and across our platform? And how many standard deviations are you? And that's sort of a rolling, constant, machine-learned algorithm to start to differentiate when somebody is doing something at a propensity, some greater likelihood than the average person across, across uh, the rest of the, the devices that we see. And so, you know, we're able to build really rich profiles based on that data. Okay, so then how, how does this start to tie into actually getting people into the store and proving that the advertising is actually working? And now we're getting closer to you know, some of the things that Beacon Technology is gonna allow us to do. And I'll talk a little bit about how we're doing it in mobile today. So this is an actual example of a footprint from a specific device that we've seen across our platform. Um, and you probably can't read the locations, you know, given uh, the distance you are from the screen and everything, but if you, you can sort of get the idea based on the pin location. So this is actually around a, uh, um, a, camp, a college campus in, in Auburn, and probably Auburn University. Um, and you can see at the top and kind of in the center of that map, there's a really tight cluster of push pins. And that's where we've seen, you know, a user or a device actually log on and we've gotten multiple repeated ad impression calls from a very, very tight cluster and location. And from that, we can start to say, okay, this person spends a, a great deal of time here. We think this might be a home location. And then we can start to look at things like how many hours or during what hours is that person actually being seen there? And probably you're at home more between seven or eight in the evening and seven or eight in the morning than you are during the day if you work a, you know, a, normal, a normal work day. And so that's sort of the second piece of the puzzle. Okay, they're here an awful lot. We see them between these, what we define as home hours. And then we'll also start to look to see how often are we seeing that signal come over a Wi-Fi network as opposed to over you know, 4G or 3G network. And we can start to detect again and, and check again and say, okay, that checks three boxes. They're here an awful lot. They're here during home hours. And, um, and we're seeing them log on over a Wi-Fi network. And then we can also detect how many other devices do we see on that Wi-Fi network. Is it a thousand or is it more like a dozen? And we can just start to distinguish between is that a workplace or is that likely a home location? And so once we've been able to pin down a home location based on strictly GPS coordinates, we're never in possession of street addresses or anything that's um, personally identifiable, we can start to do interesting things in terms of matching with third parties to start to get actual you know, data around purchases and things that these people actually do, you know, based on Experian data, um, Axiom data, that type of thing. Work with companies like Datalogix or Nielsen Catalina who have purchase-based data. And we can start to tie those profiles directly to the device and really begin to understand, I'm gonna show this person, um, you know, an ad for Old Spice deodorant because I know they currently buy RightGuard and I wanna try and convert them. And, you know, you get really, really tight one-to-one -one messaging. And so, that, that's one aspect of, of purchase-based attribution. 
there are a few different ways that we can do attribution today, and I want to take you through quickly the, um, what we're doing in terms of mobile attribution, and then start to explain how Beacon technology is going to allow us to really change the dynamic and get, um, get even more personal and more precise with, uh, with that. So I've sort of broken down things into, into two categories. We've got foot traffic attribution, and then we've got the purchase-based attribution, purchase -based attribution, which I just you know, sort of um, gave you a, pr a prelude to how we do that. The purchase side can be done with credit cards. It can be done with, um, with uh, shopper loyalty cards, anything that's tied back to a physical address through an offline data provider, we can do sort of a blind match with and start to associate those attributes with the device. Prove that we showed you an ad or we showed a device an ad and somebody in that household then went and made a purchase for a specific product um, or at a specific retailer. On the other side, what we're doing is we're using proprietary methodology to start to attribute foot traffic and say, we showed ads for uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, and then we can prove that people who saw those ads showed up in a Buffalo Wild Wings with more propensity than people who were not exposed to the ads. And I'll quickly take you through what that looks like. So essentially, you know, we're, we're typically employing those two tactics that I've talked about, where we're, we're advertising to people in proximity of your location or your competitor's location, or we've built a profile that says you're somebody who's typically interested in this type of product based on psychographic, demographic information that that advertiser knows is important to their consumer. Um, we'll begin to show ads to those people. And then later, what we're able to do is we're able to, um, we're able to say, okay, later on, I got an ad impression call from a GPS coordinate that's tied explicitly to your location. And we can start to put that together and say, I showed you an ad when you weren't in the store, and then four days later, I got an ad impression call from you and know that you were, in fact, in the location that I was advertising for. And so we'll establish a control group. We have an exposed group. We look at the comparison of the two, and we're able to project a lift percentage and say people are 50% more likely to go to your store. So really, um, really mind-blowing you know, for, for online advertising. It's really the first time in the digital space that you've been able to prove that you showed an ad to somebody digitally and then that they actually showed up physically in a retail location, right? E-commerce, you've been able to do that for a while with cookies and, and pixels and things like that, where you can say, I showed you an ad and then you bought something online. But for all the time we actually spend online, and I know Karen referenced uh, you know, the amount of time that we spend consuming content online, roughly 93% of purchases still happen in the physical world. So only 7% of that's happening online. The overwhelming majority is happening in brick and mortar locations, even today with Amazon and eBay and you know, all, the, um, all the, the sort of brick and mortar retailers having a, having a digital presence. So um, the ad impression data still has a lot of blind spots in it. And you know, we can't know, if you, if you walk into a store and you never take your phone out of your pocket and you never go and get an ad call from us, we don't know that you were there. So for as many people as we see, there's some number of people we don't see and we don't know that went there and we can't attribute that. And we don't know what that ratio is. And we have no way of understanding what that ratio is today. Um, we at Verve have a partnership with Gimbal and we're in the process now of creating a joint SDK that would be available to go primarily, the, the main way I think about it and what I'll talk through quickly here is primarily to go into merchant, into merchant or shopping companion type apps and to open up and expand the capabilities that, um, that we've been talking about so far this morning, which have really focused on push notification inside the store. And what we can do and what we can enable is attribution and sort of um, upper funnel advertising while people are outside the store to get to them to the point that they're inside the store, at which point you can then reinforce messaging with them even closer to the point of sale. And so we're able to leverage this sort of while they're out in the real world, get them to the store, and then be able to take over from there um, and start to push uh, more relevant you know, coupons or offers or specials that are inside the store. And so um, I'm trying to sort of see my slides from, uh, from an odd angle in the back of the room there, so bear with me. But um, essentially, we would, you know, we would take the, the combined SDK and we could embed that into a merchant app or into some kind of shop or companion app and now, you know, that becomes a, uh, a method for us to start to, 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 to detect when people are in proximity to beacons, primarily for attribution purposes. So I'm sorry, I'm just going to stop here real quick. So 
this is really going to be able to open a whole new toolkit for actual retailers, brick and mortar retailers. And I'm just going to, you know, pick an example. Let, let's say you were Target and you have your own Target app and you take the Verve SDK and, you know, combined with the Gimbal SDK and you embed that inside your Target shopper app. And now you have beacons deployed throughout the store. And, you know, the beacons can detect when people have entered the store, which aisles people are in in the store, um, and, and really be informative as to how people move throughout the store. We can start to collect all of that, all of that intelligence and understand where people are, which products they're engaging with, where they're spending what, the most time, what their path is. And from an advertising network perspective, we can actually focus on driving people into the store and getting them there. Once they're there, we can start to collect a lot of intelligence around who the consumer is, and we can start to build custom profiles on behalf of the advertiser. In my example, I said Target. So we can start to build custom profiles for Target, people who are interested in home goods, people who are interested in um, you know, baby care, people who are interested in men's apparel, sports apparel, people who go to the automotive section. And we can start to build these vertical profiles on behalf of, of somebody like Target and start to advertise to them while they're outside the Target store to get them to come back to make purchases that they haven't made before. And so while you know, a, a lot of other companies today are focused on the in-store experience, the combination of us with Gimbal allows us to take that same, that same intelligence and apply it broadly while people are outside the store and to try and, drive them, to try and drive them back in to take actions based on things that we know that they're interested in. And in addition to that, it can also help with just basic sort of app user management, lapse users, people who haven't logged into the app, re-messaging to them and trying to get them re-engaged, people who haven't come back to the store for a certain number of days. There's just a whole, um, a whole slew of things that we can, uh, that we can start to do with, with them. Um, and then, you know, on the other end, you know, Gimbal's got a partnership with Urban Airship, and, you know, once we sort of drive and push people into the store, that's where some of the, uh, you know, the push notification companies can start to try and close the deal. And so we really can get the full ecosystem from top of the funnel all the way down to the purchase and then push that, um, push that point of sale information back in to be able to really close the loop for, for retailers. I think I talked about the segments and the intelligence. Okay, so I sort of moved through these. I can't see them that well. So the last thing that I, I just want to talk about quickly is a, a quick case study. And we actually just won a SEMA award for um, digital advertising excellence for this execution, where we had a uh, campaign that we ran on behalf of Procter & Gamble, um, who was trying to push a line of hair care products, Wella, which is not available through, you know, sort of typical pharmacy um, type stores. It's only available in more upscale hair salons. And so... Um, and uh, personal care salons. So we essentially uh, took, took beacons, deployed them inside these, uh, these, um, these salons, and made, took, pushed people into the store via a passbook offer. So we essentially ran campaign to get people to download an offer to passbook that would allow them to go into the store and redeem it to get some kind of coupon from, from the store. We used beacons inside the store to A, prove that somebody that we showed the ad to showed up in the store, and then to also trigger the passbook and wake it up essentially so that that offer would pop to the lock screen so when a user was inside the salon and they, uh, and they turned on their device or woke up their device, the coupon was front and center on the screen for them to be able to use. And you know, as you can see here, I won't, I won't sort of read verbatim through the statistics, um, but you know, we, had, uh, we had really, what we thought was really successful engagement for something that was, for us, a first, you know, first of its kind type of execution with, uh, with advertising. So just to sort of, uh, you know, to, to sort of summarize, we're getting, we're getting closer and closer to being able to reach the consumer uh, based on their habits and their intent while they're out in the real world to drive and push them in to take physical action and to be able to prove that. And now beacons are allowing us to go sort of the last mile and to be able to actually, you know, interact with them right at the point of sale, influence their decisions, and, and to close the loop uh, from an attribution perspective. So I don't know how I am on time, but all right, if people have questions or, okay.